Now, let's a little bit talk about dead space and add some important points. So, what is the dead space? Dead space represents any air in a respiratory system that is not exchanging oxygen and carbon dioxide with the pulmonary capillary blood. The most important dead space for our purposes is the anatomic dead space. In addition of anatomic dead space, you also have to know about alveolar dead space and physiological dead space. First, let's a little bit talk about anatomic dead space. Anatomic dead space is an AOA region that because of anatomical functional structure of its tissues and organs are not capable of oxygen and carbon dioxide exchange with the blood. Anatomic dead space includes the conducting zone, the nose, pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and terminal bronchioles. Again, the volume of the anatomic dead space in mils can be approximated by the person's weight in pounds. Thus, a 150 pound individual has a dead space of 150 mils. Now, let's talk about alveolar dead space. Sometimes, an ambulance may block an artery or arterial in the lungs. As a consequence, the blood flow to the alveolar is disturbed and in spite of the presence of the air in alveolar, no gas exchange occurs here. Therefore, from a functional point of view, these alveoli must also be considered dead space. So again, alveolar dead space refers to alveoli containing air but without blood flow in the surrounding capillaries. Under normal condition, the alveolar dead space is considered to be 0 mils. There should not be alveolar dead space. Physiologic dead space. Physiologic dead space refers to the total dead space in the lung system. It is anatomic dead space plus alveolar dead space. So, if you know the physiologic dead space of a patient, you can determine the presence of alveolar dead space. You can determine does the patient have alveoli that are ventilated but not perfused. Suppose if they give you a patient weighing 150 pounds. They determined physiologic dead space of 300 mils in this patient. Can we determine if lung alveoli are being normally ventilated but not perfused? Can we determine alveolar dead space? Yes, we can. First of all, it is very important to know what is the normal anatomic dead space in a person who weighs 150 pounds. Of course, I have already said that the volume of the anatomic dead space in mils can be approximated by person's weight in pounds. Thus, a 150 pounds individual has an anatomic dead space of 150 mils. In this patient, the physiologic dead space is more than anatomic, 300 mils. This brings us to a very important point. When a physiologic dead space is greater than the anatomic dead space, it implies the presence of the alveolar dead space, meaning somewhere in a lung, alveolar are being ventilated but not perfused. Normally, physiologic dead space should be equal to anatomic dead space. In this part of the video, we will talk about anatomic dead space gas composition at the end of expiration versus at the end of inspiration. It is important to note that end of expiration means it is just before inspiration begins since breathing is cyclic in nature. Consider the lung as a simple balloon model. The neck of the balloon is the anatomic dead space and the remainder the respiratory zone. The respiratory zone is a very constant environment and the partial pressure of gases in the alveolar compartment changes very little during normal rhythmic ventilation. The partial pressure of oxygen here is 100 mm of mercury and carbon dioxide is 40 mm of mercury. 
When a person breathes out, the first 150 ml air comes out from the anatomic dead space. The respiratory zone pushes out 500 ml, but it divides into two parts. The first 350 ml will be expired out. These 350 ml with previous 150 ml compose the tidal volume, 500 ml. The remaining 150 ml air, which comes from the respiratory zone, stays in a conducting zone in an atomic dead space. This means an atomic dead space in the end of expiration will be filled with air that originated in an alveoli or respiratory zone. Thus, at the end of expiration, the composition of the air in an atomic dead space is the same as alveolar air. The partial pressures of oxygen in an atomic dead space is 100 mm of mercury and carbon dioxide is 40 mm of mercury. Again, the same as in a respiratory zone. It is a very high yield for the USMLE, please note this. This also means that a sample of expired gas taken near the end of expiration is representative of the respiratory zone and is called end tidal air. Remember it because later we will talk about it. End tidal air. As for the anatomic dead space gas composition at the end of inspiration, it differs when compared to the end of expiration. Again, the gas composition is constant in a respiratory zone. PO2 is 100 and PCO2 is 40 mm of mercury. When a person starts breathing in, first 150 ml of air comes from the anatomic dead space, not from the tidal volume. It is the air that remained in a dead space at the end of expiration and has the same composition as alveolar air. After the first 150 ml enter the alveoli, 500 ml from the inspired tidal volume comes into your lungs, but it also will be divided into two parts. First, 350 ml from the 500 ml of the tidal volume will be added to the respiratory zone air, and the remaining 150 ml stays in a conducting zone. Thus, at the end of inspiration, the anatomic dead space is filled with humidified room air and has the same composition as the room air. The partial pressure of oxygen in a room air is 160 mm of mercury and PCO2 is considered to be 0 mm of mercury. So, at the end of inspiration, an atomic dead space has the humidified room air, therefore, the partial pressure of oxygen slightly drops to 150 mm of mercury, but PCO2 is as the room air, 0 mm of mercury. About composition of room air and atmospheric air, there are different statements, and I don't think it would be very important for the USMLE, but anyway, the main important thing for the USMLE you have to remember is that some sources say that the room air has more carbon dioxide when compared with atmospheric air. They say that atmospheric air PCO2 is zero.